Welcome to Developer Diaries number 21. And today, Rob Swanson is going to go over how to create a pre-execution RPG program to drive your data sources for valence, nav, widgets, et cetera. So without further ado, Rob's on the call. And Rob, I'm going to let you take over. I'm going to mute myself. All right. Can you hear me OK? Yes. And of All course, right. Real quick, if anybody has any questions, just feel free to shoot that in the chat. Yeah, we'll get to that at the end of the session. So hello, my name's Rob, and uh, today's topic is uh, using RPG to drive a data source. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go refer back to a blog post uh, on our website. And if you're not, if you haven't been here, uh, if you go to our cnxcorp.com and hit blog, Every month we put out a, a new uh, a topic uh, with a tip of the month. And if you're not getting these already, you should go to our homepage and scroll to the very bottom. And down here, you can put in your email address and uh, you'll get on our mailing list and uh, you get a handy tip once a month uh, on things you can do in valence. But anyway, this, uh, this topic is actually covered in an older post uh, from uh, 2019 about how you can convert an RPG-based uh, print file generating program into a, uh, a grid app on a NAB. So I'm gonna basically cover most of what's in this uh, topic and you know, with a, a few extra explanations, but uh, if you need to refer back to anything I'm talking about, you can see it, uh, you can see it laid out pretty well in this blog post. So, and while we're on the topic of, uh, of the website, I want to point out that there's also a lot of people don't know that the forums are on here uh, with lots of uh, useful uh, resources for you to, to use for NAB. So for instance, this, this developer diary episode will eventually be cataloged here in the developer diaries. Uh, it'll be number 21. But uh, every, every episode that we've uh, recorded, recorded has been indexed on this site. So you can find, you can search, uh, you know, search the developer diaries and actually find exactly what you're looking for uh, pretty quick and see an actual demo of something being done if it's not already in the forum somewhere else. Um, and while we're on the forums, I should also mention that we keep our release history on here. And so all the new Valence 6 builds are listed here and you can always see at any given time uh, things that are pending for the next build. So for our release that'll be coming out sometime in August, you can see these are all the new features that are already, or features and fixes, I should say, that are, are on queue or on deck for being uh, released to the public. So if there's something in here that interests you, you can keep an eye out, out for that. And again, our, our newsletter always uh, mentions when the new builds are released as well. Um, and just continuing on the forum here, um, Feature requests, if there's something you'd like to see Valence do, uh, we do read these. Uh, if there's a feature you'd like to see added, uh, this is a good place to, to stick it. In fact, some of the things coming out in the next, the next build are actually coming from uh, requests from this forum thread. Um, and then finally, of course, you know, there's all sorts of ways to search uh, for support tips and things like that. Uh, so I encourage you to, to peruse these if you, you need to search it. It's best to log in, you know, get yourself registered here on the forum and you can get notified when a new thread is posted. But you can like search for, say, you want to find something on Excel. It'll bring up everything. Now you'll notice that this is also showing a you know, version release uh, summary. So you can actually go into advanced search and scroll down and actually say, I'm only interested in things that are in the support forum or even specific versions of the support form. You can see all that there. So just some uh, some tips on, on getting uh, additional info and resources for that that are available. So what we're gonna talk about today though, is this topic of uh, a pre-execution program and a data source. So let me, uh, I got a little quick keynote here to kind of explain, oops, let me get back here to the start. Move some stuff out of the way here. Okay, so a conventional data source and app builder, um, you typically have a file like your customer order detail file, and you might join that with your item master and your customer master using you know the item number and the uh, customer number. This is a conventional data source, whether it's wizard based or SQL based, and that will conventionally feed a grid widget or any other widget you want for that matter. 
But there are always cases we run into where some play, people have some really crazy databases or you know some crazy logic that just makes it really difficult to pull it through a conventional data source. They need an RPG program with some crazy logic to drive the data. And so we have a, a, a provision for that, which is called the pre-execution program. And using a pre-execution program, the data source is actually driven by a call to an RPG program. And that output is typically sent to a temporary file or a file that you can throw into QTemp, and then that can be used to feed the data source. And that's basically the premise of the blog post about taking a RPG program and making it feed a, uh, that, that prints, that does a print file or, or OSPEC type output and using that and making some adjustments so it instead feeds a data source to, to turn your printed output into a, a web app in valence. So, before you take this approach, though, I'd like to always uh, urge you to consider the alternatives that keep the data source more conventional. Could you get what you're trying to do with a with clause, sometimes referred to as a CTE or common table expression? And that's basically a, a, an inline QTemp file as you're building your SQL. It goes a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, presentation, but it, uh, that's something worth uh, researching if you haven't um, tried that or dabbled in that at all. Could you create a, an SQL view and use one or more views uh, to help make it possible to use a conventional data source? Or could you use VVN Virtual? So VVN Virtual is a relatively new feature we added that lets you basically adjust your SQL statement based on things that are passed from, you know, from an app variable. And there's a whole topic on that, by the way, uh, in the blog. So if I go back to the blog here, uh, very recently we put it, uh, Put this post here about uh, using virtual variables in your in your application. So it kind of explains how you would do that within your SQL. So if you haven't tried using virtual variables, uh, give that a shot. There's also a, a developer diary on this as well. So let me go back to where we were. Okay. Um, one thing I should mention is if you do go this route of using a QTemp file with a, a pre-execution program, you need to make sure it's a load all. So don't have any paging turned on your widget. And the reason for that is because when you do this approach and you have a QTemp file, that pre-execution program is throwing the QTemp file into the job that, that is called at the time the user clicks the button or, or launches the app. So to illustrate that schematically here, when I go to my first page, I'm going to have a QTemp file sitting in this job, this CGI job on the back end. But when I hit the next page, there's no guarantee I'm going to hit that same job where the QTemp file is residing. I might get routed by Apache to a different job, and there's no QTemp file there. So then you would end up, the user would end up seeing no data when he tries to go to the second page. So you got to make sure you're doing a load all approach. Now, if you must have paging, there is another way to do it. And you're not using a QTemp file. In that case, you're using kind of a, a, a global work file that's keyed on the session ID. And the blog post talks about that, but I'm not gonna go into that in this session. Uh, there's a downside to that because it means your, your, your RPG program has to churn and generate all the possible records. And if that takes a long time, your users might get impatient. So that's why we urge you to try to, try to not go this route if you don't have to, or if you do make sure it can be a load all type approach. So, okay, as that said, um, let's go log in and take a look at what we're talking about here. Let me make this bigger. So we'll put valence in our library list. So with valence, we uh, include uh, this program called exprint. And this is just a, a, a standard, uh, RPG program that generates output to a print file that's been modified to uh, also support uh, a valence app. So you can use it for either. You can you know, repurpose an existing program that's used to create a print file to alternate, alternatively also provide output to a, to a valence nab app. So to see what it does, we can just call it and call the X print. And if you pass it an out queue as a parameter, so if I say, let's send this output to printer one, job now, see we got a spool file and it's generated uh, just a simple you know, output of uh, orders by a customer. I mean, there's overprinting here, but if you look at the blog post, you can see what it would actually look like if you printed it out. So 
So what we want to do is see, can we get this printed output um, converted to support a, uh, a NAB grid app? Now, I would generally say I would not even try to use the logic. I would just go right after the same files that the RPG program is getting uh, through a conventional data source and generate this output pretty easily. But let's just say for sake of argument that this RPG program is doing some insane logic, combining fields, doing substrings out of uh, crazy fields that are being repurposed for other things that would just be really hard to do it in a conventional data source. So we have that option of making that RPG program send the output to QTemp and uh, use that as our data source. So within the source code, I actually made a copy of this and took out the valence mod just to show the, what, what the basic uh, idea is. So in our, in our core you know, vanilla program, we're just pulling in the out queue and we're overriding the print file to that out queue and then printing it. So if we go down to the print it section, you can see it's just reading through the demo CMAS file, pulling in orders and looking for non-shipped orders and then writing that record to a uh, to our print file here, detail. So the key for doing this in valence is to say, instead of sending our output to a print file or doing an accept to an OSPEC, we wanna intercept these, these writes and say, okay, route it instead to a QTEMP file, and then we can use that as our data source. So using this approach, you could use any kind of RPG logic you wanted and just send your output to QTEMP and then that becomes your data source. So it takes away that whole necessity of using SQL or, or a conventional you know, wizard-based data source. So let's take a look at the actual code that's distributed with valence, which is this guy. We got some comments in there and you'll notice that everywhere there's a valence uh, modification, there is a VV. Actually, I, did, I was doing something else. Let me take something out of here. Or these, these are just me playing around with some other things. Okay, so everywhere we've introduced valence code, we've got a VV modification just to kind of show you conceptually how this was done. So the first thing we've done is we've added an F spec for the, the, the work file that we're gonna be putting in QTEM. And so the way we know we're in valence is valence mode is because when this is called, it's not getting any parameters. So we're setting a global parameter says, hey, we're in valence mode. And then throughout the rest of the program, we're gonna to check to see, are we in valence mode? If we are, then don't send the stuff to a print file, send it instead to uh, valence. So here we say, okay, our first intercept is if we're, not, if we're not in valence mode, go ahead and override the print file. Otherwise, we're gonna prepare a work file. So we have a new procedure in here called prepare work file. And what it's doing is basically creating a queue that we're using a, a VV utility uh, procedure to see does our work file already exist in QTemp? If it doesn't, then we're going to copy it from, we've created a, a, a generic work file for it. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And then we're going to cre create a, a override to make sure that we're hitting the one in QTemp, just in case you don't have QTemp high in your library list above the valence library. Uh, then we're going to ensure that the field, that the work file is empty before we start populating it. Okay. And then when we're in the print it routine, it's pretty much business as usual right down until we get to where we're writing to the print file. And here we say, okay, we're going to throw in an if statement, say, if we're not in valence, then go ahead and continue printing it as normal to a print file. Otherwise, we're just going to write the same, the same fields to our work file. And then we also skip writing the footer and closing the print file. So um, let's talk a little bit about this work file. So <clears throat> up here, you can see we've got a printer file defined uh, for use with uh, uh, with the with the original program, and then we have now we have this work file exprintw1, and there's a utility included with Valence to help you create these uh, work files uh, based on your printer file definition. That way, you can keep the same field names and everything. So, if we go back to the blog post, this back to normal size. Uh, there's this program called VV create work file or VV CRT WRKF. And that'll take any existing print file you have and, and, and provide the, uh, you know, the, an object that you can use as a work file for that. So if we go in here, I've already got valence in my library list. If I saw, if I say call VV create print file, what is it called VV create work file, sorry. 
All you gotta do is tell it the name of your print file, which is in our case, ex print p1. And the record format, if you don't know what it is, just hit F4 and it'll tell you, you know, what your options are. We don't care about the header or the footer. We just want the meat, the detail that's being written uh, out to the, to the file. And you might have multiple uh, record formats, so you could create multiple work files in that situation. And then just say where you want it to go. I can say, okay, we'll send it to valence six. Oops, I want to put it to your own library, but we'll just, for sake of example, I'm going to call this uh, test file. Now I've already got one out there, so I'll just do this. So that'll create the object for us. And now it's, it's sitting, the object is sitting there. So if I do a display file description or field description, I can see now that I've got, I've got two special fields. One is a sort sequence and one is a session ID. We're not going to use the session ID, but the blog post explains how you could use this if you need, if you couldn't use QTemp, if you needed to have a work file that would be you know, universally available. So in case someone's paging through it, uh, you can use the session ID to keep it unique to each uh, individual session for users that are running the app. But we're not gonna use that approach, so we don't really care about that field. But we've got the sort sequence, which is the way to keep track of things that are written to the print file to keep it the, the sequential order of it intact. And then we've got all the same um, columns that we had in the print file. We've got customer, there we go. Okay, we've got customer, order number, status, scheduled date, destination lines, and value. So those are all the same uh, columns that appear in our in our printed output. So we're just basically mimicking the same exact thing and making it really easy for us to adjust the RPG program. So all we got to do is route those same printed columns into our QTemp file, and then we can use that. So going back to our, <clears throat> our source here, you can see then that we're, we're just incrementing our sort counter, our counter, just to make sure that it keeps, it retains the same order that we're outputting it to the print file, and then we're writing the work file, so. Okay, so once you've got your work file done, then now we can go in and start playing in Valence to get this thing going. So let's go log into Valence and see how that would be done. So the key for that is it needs, NAP needs or NAB needs to be able to see that file. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start creating a data source. We'll do an SQL based one. I'm gonna say select everything from exprintw1, which is the one that we created uh, beforehand that's distributed. So up comes our, our fields. We don't actually care about the session ID and we don't even, well, we'll leave the rest. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say, select all these columns and I'm gonna say order by sort sequence. I, I could probably eliminate that from the select if I wanted, but I'll just leave it in there for, for the hell of it. So this give us, gives us a, a, a data source to play with. And now here's the key. Um, this, this version of the file that it's pulling is, may or may not be populated. It does have data in it, but it may not. It could just be a, a shell of a file. It's just that was just created uh, from the definition of the print file. But the key is we wanna make sure we overwrite, you can call our, our pre-execution RPG program to repopulate this with the records that the user wants at that time. So when you go to save it, We'll just call this uh, um, DB21 source. You advance, you open up the advanced section, you see here's where you can specify your pre-execution program. Now we've distributed with valence this exprintw, which is a wrapper for exprint. And it only does one thing. It just basically accepts the call Whenever you do a pre-execution program, there's two parameters. There's the data source ID and error text. So I could optionally send back an error. If I had a problem in my RPG program, I could send back a message that would pop up for the user saying something, something bad happened. It couldn't build the data. But all we're doing basically in this wrapper is one thing. We're just calling exprint. We're just making a straight call to that program with no parameters. Therefore, as we saw earlier, when that program receives the call, it knows uh, that it's being called in valence and to act accordingly. So I'm going to go specify this exprint 
wrapper as my uh, execution program. And while we're here, let me just mention the sort sequence. This is where you can override, it's another advanced option. This is where you can override the SQL sort sequence that's used uh, for the data source. Now, by default, if you're just using vanilla or you know, valence out of the box, there's a there's a setting, a global setting that says uh, use lang, lang ID share, which means basically it's equal weighting to lowercase and uppercase uh, variables. A upper uppercase A and lowercase A are equally weighted. That way, when your users are searching for something, it doesn't matter if they put it in uppercase or lowercase, it's going to find it. Likewise, your sorting will mix uppercase and lowercase together. But that can come with a performance penalty, depending on your indexing and all sorts of things. And I won't go into, into that other uh, in, in this session, other than to say there is a blog post on that. So if you ever run into a case where there's uh, a poorly performing um, uh, app in your, you know, and it's got a character field as your order by, you could probably speed that up considerably by changing the sort sequence. And I'll just make a reference to that if you scroll down here and look for the look for the speed racer here. This has a whole <clears throat> explanation of what that sort sequence does and what it, how you can override it and what it means. So uh, just mentioning that while we're out here on this, on this advanced panel. So I'm just gonna leave that alone. So I'll hit save. So what that means now is when this data source is used for a widget, it's gonna see, oh, I've got a pre-execution program associated with me. I'm gonna call that first and wait for it to finish before I proceed. Okay, so. Uh, now we can create a grid out of that. <clears throat> and we'll just uh, select everything. I guess I don't really care about the sort sequence. Customer, order number. Date. Destination. And value. Oops. So we can see this kind of forming and um, we can do a little bit of formatting on this. We can say, okay, the value we know is a dollar value. So we'll give it money and the, uh, the date is what's the format, the USA format here. And <clears throat> one of the things you'll notice that's, a, that's coming out by default is we've just got the same customer listed over and over and over but it's, we're, we're ordering by that. So it seems like an opportunity for a group by, right? So we can go to the configure and we'll say, we'll group by the customer. And then I'll throw that up in the, as a grouping. So and another thing we can do that we, as an improvement over what the printed output looked like is we can say, well, I'm gonna give the, give the user some totals. So we'll say, okay, let's see the total lines. We'll give them a total of that and the total value. We'll give them a total of that. So that can be a nice thing for them to see. So when they <clears throat> when they run this thing, you know, if they formally are used to printing out, they can say, hey, well, now you get a total of the lines and total value uh, on the order. So it's actually an improvement. You know, one of the things you kind of run into politically when you're trying to wean people off of their old habits is saying, you know, I liked it better the old way. Well, here you go. Here's a another enticing reason to uh, switch to the um, to the valence equivalent because you get a lot more a lot more functionality you get the ability to print it on demand you can download it to excel we'll put that in there so download to excel we call it you know the little little download uh, download icon here but remember what i said earlier you don't want paging in this approach because of that q-temp problem so we want to make sure we turn off the paging in this case there's only 844 records so that's not a big deal to have it all on one page so we'll go here to paging and turn that off and then we're ready to ready to roll so that app is ready to, de to deploy and save it but, uh, And uh, of course, go create an app for it real quick. And I guess I could have added a, a PDF option on that as well. So they could have uh, printed it just like they're used to. Um, it's up in administration so we can see it real easy. So when I go back and do that real quick too, just to make it formally uh, as cool as possible. So we'll go to the uh, 
configure the download and we'll give them a PDF option too. And we'll just call that orders and that's just the basics. So now they can, they can still get their printout if that's what they really want. They love their paper, but they can also download it to Excel and they see totals. So if, I think we've given them a much better alternative to their printed output. So now we can see that that's available. And of course, you can give them a direct link to this, so you can really kind of ease them into it. And hopefully, they'll they'll find this uh, preferable to what they've been doing in the past. So, so that is in a nutshell uh, how you would introduce a pre-execution program to drive a data source, which then feeds your widget. In this case, a grid. Were there any uh, questions, Johnny? Yeah, we had one come in. The question was, when should we use page on grid? Paging. Okay. Well, so back to the blog post. Um, there is a section down and at the end that says, uh, let's see what's, oh, I'm the wrong, wrong post. Let me go back. So considerations for page at a time load. So it kind of explains all the different things you should to go into the decision to say, I really want this to be a paging grid. Um, <clears throat> Generally speaking, the browser, you know, modern computers running browsers can probably support several thousand records fine. I would say if you get much over 5,000 or 6,000 records, then, you know, that's putting a lot of burden on the, depending on how many columns you have to put all that in the memory and then display it uh, in the browser. And it can also take a while. So uh, that, that's when you start, start wanting to do paging. Um, it's a nice, it's nice for users to not have to page. If I can see everything I need just through, through a single scroll and maybe with some search uh, options, that's a lot more, uh, you know, pleasurable feedback to the user in terms of snappy performance than it is to have to hit, go down at the bottom and keep in the next page, next page, next page. So, um, but there's no, you know, hard set, you know, limit to like, you know, once you get over this many records, you must go to page. You could have 10,000. You could have 50,000 records if you wanted, but just consider the performance impact and, and you know, where you reach a point where the user's browser, you know, the user's computers are overwhelmed with that amount of data. So, but if you do find you do need to go to paging, that is explained to how you, in that, in that situation, using this approach with the pre-execution program, you would use the session ID as a way to distinguish the records for, from one user to the other uh, so they don't step on each other, you know, using the same file for their for their work data, so. All right, and we had another question. Is there a way to pass parameters to the RPG program? I had a feeling someone was gonna ask that. <laughs> um, yes, there is, but it's 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 a little bit, well, let's just go back here and let's just say, let, let me go make a little change to this and we'll just throw in a, we'll throw in a filter on here. Let's say, actually, let me go back to the actual original data source. Oops, I went to the wrong spot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the, uh, that one, the one field I wasn't including before. We don't really care about the session ID field. I just wanted to have a, a dummy field to work with. So let's say you wanted to give the user ability to say, you know, I want a special mode on, on the RPG program to do something, you know, slightly different on the data it's building. So <clears throat> what I could do here is I could put a, a filter on this and I'm not really filtering the session ID. I just want to say, okay, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, flux type. Shout out to, uh, Michael, Michael Fox and uh, Back to the Future flux capacitor. Anyway, let's just say I want to make that a checkbox. And, you know, I just can say, you know, special. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to have a, uh, I'm going to have a, a special uh, flux type, you know, checkbox. And if I just leave it like that, it's going to end up basically blanking out my grid. So a couple of things you need to do. First is I need to take that uh, variable in to a filter program. So if I go back to the filters up here, you can specify a filter program that'll pull that in and then override the where clause 
uh, to something that's not going to limit your results. So that's step one. And when I talk about that filter program, uh, there's also a blog post on that. I think that was in uh, last this this month's uh, July presentation. So take a look at this blog post about the filter program. Bottom line is we want to make sure we override that where clause so it's not trying to filter on the session ID. We're just we're just hijacking that field in order to let the users specify something. So the filter program should return a filter that still includes everything like, you know, customer not equal to blank. Then step two is for your EX print or whatever your RPG pre-execution program is, it can pull in variables as well. And we'll probably find a way to make this a little cleaner in the future. But if I bring up dev tools, actually not here, I'll do it over here. If I bring up dev tools and go back to my configure and I check that box, you can see that by default, we're passing, let's see, we're passing this add filter. So we can intercept that when we're, you know, when we're uh, coming back from, uh, you know, from the back end and actually do something different. We, you can see that filter, filter session ID special. We could, we could go pull that in and go do something. That could be something in the RPG program. So the RPG program could just have a simple, say, if we're in valence mode, and the, maybe we'd have a global variable, maybe right here we could say, okay, say special mode equals VVN, and then we could do filter session ID. So care filter, session ID. And so I could look, I could use this, this variable to say, okay, if special mode has something in it, then my, my work logic down here where I'm actually building the, the file might do something different. So uh, it's a little bit of a hack, but yeah, you can, you know, you can use all the same VVN, num, VVN char, all the things that you do in a, in a normal, you know, RPG program within your pre-execution program and pull in just about anything you see being sent as a, uh, as a query parm. So all this data can be sent. The only key is if you're using this, if you're using it as a filter, like I'm doing here, you got to make sure that your filter program actually changes the filter to something that doesn't affect the output. So like I said, you could say customer not equal to blank or value greater than zero or anything like that, just to make sure that the front end doesn't uh, limit it. And in a future build, hopefully next month's build, we'll actually have a way to just say, ignore all filters and just you know leave the data as is and let the RPG program do its thing. And when we have that out, we'll uh, mention that in the newsletter. So anything else, Johnny? Um, um, another question, I guess in the exit print program, you need to add the binding to the valence service program. Yes, that that is um, one of the things we do. So we're, we're bringing in the H specs. You might have your own custom H specs, but the key is bringing in the uh, bringing in your D specs and of course, uh, binding your EX print to uh, the, e the VV serve program. So <clears throat> I'm guessing that we have a binding directory and e I think it's an H spec, yeah. So by, by virtue of including that, we're binding it automatically into uh, EX, uh, I'm sorry, VV serve program, but you could also bind it yourself when you do the compile command or add your own H spec for it. I think that's it. Anything else? Unless anybody has any other questions, no. I want to put those in the chat. <clears throat> All right, very good. Well, so now you have a way to, uh, if you can't use SQL, you can't use a normal data source, you always can defer to the good old RPG and do things the old way, old fashioned way, the tried and true way. All right, well, with that, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Valence Developer Diaries. Thanks, everyone.